Okay, so now we're going to be doing conversions for units of measurement in both the apothecary and household system. So we're just going to be doing more conversions of measurements, but again, specifically in the apothecary and household system. Okay, so here is another table, again, of the equivalent measurements. And again, this one is for the metric, apothecary, and household system. So as I mentioned, if you're not going from metric to metric, I will give you the measurements. So for example, notice um, one pint is equal to 480 milliliters. Milliliters does fall under the metric system, but pint does not. So that is an information that I will give you. But if we were going, I don't know, kiloliter to milliliter, that is something you would have to know with using either the prefix line or anything we talked about in the previous chapters. Okay. And here you can see there is an asterisk and it implies an indi it, it, blah, blah, blah. it does indicate an approximation. So some of these are um, ongoing decimals, but here they just provided the approximation of it. Okay, let's go ahead and do conversions. So we are going to be following stoichiometry. So Again, if you are using a different system, please make sure you let me know. So here we can see we're going from 30 milliliters to tablespoons. What we're going to have to know is what is the equivalent measure. So here we can see, well, within every one tablespoon, there are 15 milliliters. So that is what we're going to need to help eventually go from milliliter to tablespoon. So remember what happens. We start with what's given. That's the first fraction. That's always what's going to happen. We start with what's given. So 30 over 1, because remember, 30 divided by 1 goes back to just 30. And we have to think strategically, I want milliliters gone. And I want to be able to go from milliliters to tablespoon. Well, that's where this guy comes in. But again, the placement is important on how to set up the next fraction. Because remember, I want to get rid of milliliters. So then I have to think, how can I cancel out milliliters in a fraction? So remember, that's the same thing. If you have four times four x over four, this four, or even if we had it like this, four x times one fourth. Notice this four over four cancels out. So that's what we want to do here. We want to go milliliters in the denominator. And we can go straight to tablespoon because they have an equivalent measurement. We know what every one tablespoon there are 15 milliliters. So that's what we can fill in here. And now notice the milliliter, oh, let me use a different color. The milliliter over milliliter cancels out based off fractions. And now we see with what's left. Remember when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators with the numerators and the denominators with the denominator. So in the numerator, we have 30 times one, and that's 30. And we have one times 15, which is 15. And then 30 divided by 15 simplifies to two tablespoons. Okay, next example. We have 30 kilograms is equal to how many pounds? So again, first things first, we have to notice what is the equivalent measurement. This is a bit more of a popular one, especially for those who maybe work in the healthcare system. So one kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. So that's what we have here. And remember, this is what I will give you on the um, final exam. So we have to set up our fractions. So 30, or I'm sorry, three kilograms over one. That's our first fraction. And now we have to figure out how do I get rid of kilograms and go into the world of pounds? Well, that's the key right here, this equivalent measure. So we have one kilogram. Remember, we whatever we want in the next fraction to cancel out, that has to go on the denominator so the units can cancel out. And then we have, well, we know that one kilogram is equivalent to 2.2 pounds. So here we can see that kilogram cancels out. And now we're left with the multiplication of 3 times 2.2 .2 and 1 times 1. Let's go to the side. And multiply 3. We'll do it like this. 2.2 .2 times 3. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is also 6. But notice... 
We have one decimal, one number after the decimal here, zero here, so that implies one number after the decimal <clears throat> in our final answer. So that implies that three kilograms is equal to 6.6 .6 pounds. And that is our final answer. And this will be it. So a little bit of a short chapter in chapter nine, but nonetheless, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to let me know.